testing we are live well hello everyone welcome to the april 7th community call for the smart contract research forum today we have an interesting uh event planned i suppose or a conversation a discussion if you will about uh our our need to incentivize meritorious content and i'll get into that in a second i'll do some context setting and talk about some base assumptions and then we can get into some nitty-gritties but Today we're talking about source cred uh, and the ways that it could potentially fill in some blanks in our organization. We'll, um, like I said, look at a presentation uh, and then we'll do a, a sort of a round robin, have a discussion. I think this might be interesting because we're going to be touching on a lot of the key concepts of what Web3 is all about, um, what uh, DAOs and communities are all about, and what uh, incentivization is all about. And we'll. Uh, dig into some of the nuances there, but I wanted to establish some context. Um, and I'll try to do it in a way that's not gonna cause people to roll their eyes, but here we go. In the beginning, there was Skirt. And so we got together and we started talking about um, what is an interesting way that <clears throat> as a community, we can um, encourage uh, all, all of our participants to solve a very particular problem. And that very particular problem, or that umbrella of problems, I suppose, falls under how do we connect industry and academia together? So the supposition is that academia possesses a, a wellspring of information and in, in data and models that could provide uh, utility and some bootstrapping mechanisms to industry in our space, in the Web3 space, uh, and avoid help us to avoid a problem where we're reinventing the wheel or rediscovering governance or uh, trying to route around collusion. Uh, these things have all been thought about previously. The, there's a long, long, long history of academia uh, exploring these ideas. They have some strong opinions. It would behoove us to know what those things are. And so that's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is that we have industry. Industry performs rapid experiments. It uh, creates case studies. It produces data. It has um, emergent challenges that it needs to have solutions for, and it needs it would presumably love to communicate those challenges directly to academia. And then uh, we have uh, this wonderful situation where both groups um, have something to offer and something they need. These things align together. How can SCURF be the facilitator of this thing? So um, the question, well, how does SCURF become the facilitator? The question is in itself, um, ever present. So we experiment with uh, various mechanisms to try to create those connections and see which ones work and which ones don't. We collect data, we incentivize things we think are working and disincentivize the things we think are not working. Uh, for the purposes of today's conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll be talking about one of these mechanisms we use is we, we want uh, our team of researchers, our uh, unaligned researchers or our community researchers or summarizers to be able to uh, find content that's been produced in academia uh, through the, usually in the form of papers, uh, summarize them, condense them down, uh, identify all the most relevant pieces of it, and then present it back to the ecosystem in a way that makes that source material more discoverable and more accessible to industry. Well, and then the hope is that we'll have industry engaging with these summaries and going, oh my God, that's the thing that we've been trying to whiteboard for the last six months. Now we know that there's actually a name for it. And just even more amazingly, people have been thinking about this thing. How do we get a hold of uh, the primary authors or how do I dig into the source material there? How do we um, uh, save ourselves all the pain and heartache of trying to rediscover this stuff all over again? That's, that's kind of, that's one of these uh, facilitations that SCURF is very interested in doing. So we are trying to create the content in the forum that is creating engagement and is uh, providing value to various actors. The, the researchers that, or the summarizers that are summarizing the paper, we're trying to make more discoverable the source material so people engage with primary authors. And we're trying to encourage, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the industry to come in and engage with all of us. Then what happens? Who knows? That's where the, the experiment part comes in. So we, we set up panels, we offer up grants, we get people uh, talking together, and then uh, sky's the limit on the way that that kind of uh, activity can make Web3 better for all of us. So that's, the, for the purposes of today's conversation, that's the context. We have content coming in the forum. We want people to engage with it. We want that engagement uh, to be as high quality as we possibly can. How do we begin to... Um, 
I, should, I was about to say, how do we begin the dog food? But I've been told I should use this euphemism instead. How do we drink our own champagne here? So we're here talking about um, cryptographic primitives, incentive mechanisms, governance mechanisms, all of these tools. Uh, we're talking about them, but here's a, a, a delightful opportunity for us to begin to implement some of them. And so we asked about what can we do or what, what kind of tooling can we find that would encourage people to produce meritorious content in our forum, um, get rewarded for the production of that meritorious content, and also, and this is a big one for me personally, um, begin to acquire some agency over the distribution of those funds as well and, and some ownership over the ecosystem that they're working in. Um, we live in a world that is rapidly um, heading towards just this omnipresent gig economy. And personally, I don't think that's super great. So how do we uh, uh, try to uh, model that efficiency of a gig economy, but also overlay some agency and some uh, ownership and allow people to set the direction of their own, uh, uh, they, their own marketplace that they're working in and derive uh, direct benefits from that. And source cred seems, source cred is a tool that seems to tick all those boxes. So. In summary, we want to encourage meritorious content in the forum. Uh, we want to uh, implement and experiment with multiple reward mechanisms. So our summarizers and we uh, issue grants to summarizers that are making the summaries. We issue uh, awards and grants to uh, primary authors that are creating, creating the source materials. We allocate grants to industry that is interacting with um, uh, all these materials as well and the primary authors, but we also want the summarizers and the people that are organically coming into our forum and providing deep insights and putting in the work, and it is literally work, to to comment and to provide peer review on these threads. We want to make sure that they're getting compensated as well for their time and effort. This is tremendously valuable stuff. Um, it's fun to have uh, numerous uh, incentivization mechanisms. So we can, we can allocate grants, but we can also potentially allow the uh, community to decide what is meritorious or not, allocate a bucket of funds to that pool, and then have a tool like SourceGrid distribute those things. Um, that's a fun uh, thing to watch happen. I've done it in MakerDAO, and I'd love to uh, see what it would look like here. Um, I think that maybe that's, yeah, so I went around in circles a bit that wasn't as completely, um, well, as nuanced or as enticing as I had hoped my presentation would be, but these are the things that we're thinking about. Um, all these things, we're gonna scratch the surface a bit after we see a presentation from Brian about what our implementation uh, could potentially look like. And then we'll get into notions of like uh, compensation and how do we work, do we, is gaming a consideration that we need to think about? Uh, what knobs and levers should we be uh, playing with in order to ensure that this thing maps back to our values and uh, literally provides value to the actors involved, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of philosophy here. Um, I'm going to take a breath there, a much needed breath, um, and uh, encourage, nay, beg people to ask questions. So this is an open forum. It's not rich radio. If you um, have any insights or questions or anything I said was confusing or a bit too rambly, please uh, type your question in the sidebar. We'll stop, uh, read out the question, and then answer the question for the benefit of our audio listeners. And we will also uh, give people the opportunity just to jump on mic and uh, pontificate as they see fit. All right, does that make sense to everybody? Any questions about uh, any of the stuff that I said up until this point before we head into the presentation? Uh -oh, I did suck the oxygen out. All right, uh, the people that are <laughs> regular uh, victims of my rich radio ranting will know that um, I am super keen on getting a Q&A session going, so I might uh, just start picking random names the next time and see if anybody has any insights on the things I'm talking about. But there'll be more to uh, dig into in a second. I'm going to hand it over to Brian right now, and he can walk us through some of the more technical or, or you know, the nitty gritty of what we're thinking about as far as a, a source grid implementation goes. After we're done, um, we can dig into uh, either macro or micro philosophy about what implementation looks like or what is the nature of incentivization and or um, what kind of content are we looking for to push incentives. It's going to get pretty deep, I think. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead actually, and... Yeah. You know what, I'm going to leverage the fact that somebody did actually just ask a question. So, uh, okay. Jay Ringo, did you want to ask that out loud or should I read the question? Mike works. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm just. Uh, you pointed out two uh, aspects of the, the realm of science, I suppose, and research, uh, academia, and industry. Uh, it's mm -hmm. great to have them talking together. I'm just wondering how the public sphere would also be incorporated into this. Yeah, so we have some shorthands. Uh, it's just pleasingly symmetrical to talk about industry and academia, but there's an entire ecosystem of independent actors. There's a, a project owner and architects. There's people that are thinking about taking on projects. There's just uh, people are just naturally interested in the web free space. And so, no, we're not excluding anyone. It's just it's easier for us to, um, for branding and communication purposes, dump people into one of two buckets. But no, gotcha. anybody is sense. free to free to join. Uh, Brian, you want to get us kicked off? Yep, let me share my screen here. Oops, that's not the right button. Okay. Looks good. Oops. <laughs> okay, great. So, hi everybody. My name is Brian Alexakis, and I'm representing the Smart Contract Research Forum on our findings about how we might use cred, source cred and how we can configure the node and edge weights and the resulting cred rank for that. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, so I think Rich gave a great introduction to source cred uh, and what we might want to do with it. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about source cred, their website is there, sourcecred.io. And it's a tool for communities to measure and reward value creation. So what am I going to be speaking about today uh, at a kind of a quick, quick description of how cred is generated? And then I'm going to really kind of talk more about how we can change node and edge weights against the current state of our forum. Uh, yes, Richard. Sorry, I just had a sinking feeling after you started at the very beginning of your first page of your presentation, but does anybody in this call actually need to know what source credit is? Like, I, it just occurred to me that we're kind of just jumping into the fact that everybody understands how that interacts with our forum and what the point of this thing is. Does anybody need to explain it like I'm five about what source credit is supposed to do and how it works? Okay, so we're, everybody's familiar with the basic notion. Yeah, I can kind of go on fast forward. Uh, so here is the contribution graph. Uh, if you want to know more about it, I have some links here uh, that really dive into it. Uh, same thing for what the nodes are, and this is really more specific to what nodes are as far as discourse is concerned. So we have topic posts and likes. And then edges. So uh, edges that are of importance to discourse are authors, references, reply to, create likes, and has parent. And again, there's some information on the slide if you want to uh, dive into the documentation on that information. Uh, so kind of, I think the more relevant bit for today's conversation is the difference between content validation and content creation. Uh, so there are kind of two general approaches to minting cred. Activity, uh, activity minted, which is content creation, things like topics and posts, and then like minted, so content validation, which are things like likes. Uh, you can also do a hybrid of the two where you mixture, and, and that's what I'm going to be kind of displaying today. Uh, so some trade-offs, uh, some interesting, this is kind of, I hope to be like a, a very loose primer to our conversation. Uh, so some trade-offs for content validation. Uh, they are typically good for well-established communities, incentivize high-quality posts, likes can signal this is kind of a valuable thing, and I'd like to see more of that. However, on, on, the, on the flip side, it can create popularity contest dynamics where memes and heavily promoted posts can gather unbalanced likes relative to their value that they're adding to the community. And it can kind of make it easier uh, to game and might be suitable for less lower trust levels. Uh, on the other hand, we have content creation trade-offs, actively minting cred for uh, newer communities. Uh, they ha we have higher trust in the smaller communities, and so content creation is less susceptible to gaming. And this incentivizes a raw activity to build up enough content for especially to attract new users. So this is kind of a high-level uh, trade-off between the two. Actually generating the graph, well, when we actually run the, the graph, it's something that is run locally. It pulls down uh, JSON data from the forum. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because that's really all that's happening here. So there's no real risk or danger to the SCURF form itself. Uh, it, you know, the source cred runs kind of in its own world. 
It doesn't touch the database or do anything. There's no add-ons or anything else that will affect the discourse uh, running. So just a side note there. OK, so uh, the source cred UI allows for setting um, weights and for both nodes and edges. And here is on the screen an example of that. So we can change the post, topic, and like values along with the edge weights. So right now, the topic, uh, this presentation is mostly going to focus on node weights and a little bit on the edge weights at the end to see how that might affect it. So here we have uh, result values, default weights for fully like-minted approach. Uh, this is something that we can use as a, a comparison. Uh, these values we can now look at compared to content weights, which is here a fully activity-minted approach. And what's interesting you'll see is that the people are kind of the same people. And I, later in the deck, I have all these sort of next to each other, so you can compare them more easily. Uh, so the, the sort of order of, 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 of listing of people is relatively fixed because I think that it kind of reflects uh, the activity that those, whether we slice it one way or the other, uh, they're going to kind of come out on top. But what's interesting, though, is to see how cred is distributed across that landscape. So that's kind of my goal is, is to give some insight to that. Uh, if we use a hybrid model, we have uh, a result where we have a little bit more cred at the top if we start adding a little bit of likes. And you can see as we add more likes, the cred distribution gets wider. And even more likes, it goes up even more. So, um, And here we have a straight down the middle approach where we have um, kind of a similar result. But uh, again, the, the cred results spread is, is kind of what to look at. Uh, and then at the end, you can spend time looking at the comparisons directly. Uh, I, I don't know how much time, I, I can't really just re-explain it. This is really just up to the community to look and decipher. I'm not really trying to offer like my suggestion as to what I think is good, but I hope that these numbers and values and corresponding node weights will be of use to us uh, to reflect on, as these are values that currently represent the state of our forum. And uh, here at the end, I wanted to show something that uses a different edge weight. So here we have. A, uh, a little bit of how we might see edge weights modifying the default. Did we lose your audio, Glenn, or did you stop talking? Sounds, sounds like we lost his audio. I can't hear anybody. Too busy presenting to realize you can't hear him. All right, um, let's give him a second to try to come back with his audio. And um, we had a hand up. Sorry, I missed the name. Oh, the hand went back down again. All right. Um, so uh, let me set some context here um, while Brian is playing with the microphone stuff. Uh, he's probably saying something like, here's some links where you can see some. <laughs> I was going to try to anticipate what he's talking about. Uh, we could do some bad lip dubbing, but that might uh, impair the seriousness of this conversation, so I'll resist. Um, so oh, there he is. He's back now. I think we can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, I think. The last last two slides we, we missed. Do I need to put this one? Yeah. No, that would have been double embarrassing. So if you had any bangers that you wanted to talk about in the last two slides, we can get those out of the way.
thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. Um, we'll probably be directing questions your way in a second. I see that Woodrow has one that's relevant. I want to um, uh, precede some some thoughts here, some buckets of questions we can get into. And I know, Paul, you probably have a lot of thoughts about these too, as it ultimately uh, the, moder the engagement team's responsibility is to encourage uh, a vibrant uh, community in our forum. So this is going to be in your uh, wheelhouse to manage, I suppose. But we want to incentivize uh, the time. We want to recognize and incentivize the amount of work it takes to engage with our forum. It's not thumbs up, likes, or emojis. It's um, read through a fairly dense paper, uh, have some kind of understanding of what could be improved or what the implications of that paper is, and then writing a comment or engaging in a conversation um, that uh, has some weight to it. And that takes time. And I want to recognize as an organization, the amount of time it takes. Like we all, I don't know if anybody's like me, but to come up with the perfect tweet can take like 25 minutes, half hour, just staring at those 280, 100, or 280 characters. Uh, coming up with a really good comment in our forum could easily take hours. Um, expecting people to do that in a highly uh, competitive attention economy like the one that we live in, uh, Expecting people to do that for free and on the regular is a tough, uh, it's a big ask. So that's one of the reasons why we're thinking about these additional incentive mechanisms. So um, how do we frame, how do we have the community uh, acquire some ownership of this ecosystem? So we do not want to uh, have a top down, here's your waiting system, uh, good luck, hope you like it. We want the community to get together and determine what weights work for the community. Um, and there's a lot of debates that will happen there around um, reputation-based incentivizations or uh, content creation-based incentives. Those things are all built into uh, various edge weighting mechanisms. And we should think about um, what level of compensation is fair. And this is another interesting conversation because in my experience, communities, when they get together and they manage their own treasuries, contrary to what you might expect, uh, they can be they can edge err on the side of being too cheap and a little too uh, bean country, I suppose. Um, so how do we ensure that we're actually providing a, enough of value, enough value to our uh, stakeholders that, that encourage them to continue to engage with us versus the um, uh, understandable but potentially misguided uh, in, uh, drive to conserve uh, or hit the bottom on, on value for money. So these are all interesting topics to consider. I have a whole bunch of opinions about what I think the right answers are to all those things, but I will not reveal them because I don't want to color the conversation. So, um, Paul, did you want to jump in with some uh, some stuff right now, or should we go into a round robin and just start asking and answering some questions? Um, I'd be happy to jump in like real quick because another thing that I just want to make sure that we kind of have a common understanding of is um, I do not think at least from my perspective, we are not thinking that this is in some ways a replacement for the kind of the curated approach that the engagement team is trying to take with encouraging comments and kind of recognizing people's contributions and also just like moderation stuff, right? So I know some of the, in the thread, um, there are some concerns about gaming, which also is, you know, that's a thing we do have to deal with, uh, but you know, there is still kind of the moderation team. It's not like we are letting some type of software kind of do moderation for us uh and so like there is that kind of that human touch as well of you know this looks like bizarre or gaming or not what scurf wants type of behavior and it's not just um, through source cred or some other type of tool that we may or may not adopt in the future um that we would be doing that there's still kind of this very human and community and socialization and culture element that i would like to be alive and well and thriving on the forum as well but I also have kind of strong opinions here, but I want to get into Q and A as well. That's a great point. Thanks for raising it. Um, I think that there's um, a tendency in our in our space for binary thinking, and so we uh, culturally, over the course of uh, months or years, uh, align on okay, well, the, the algorithms can rule us more effectively, and so everything needs to be uh, embedded in a contract, and then that fails horribly, and then we move back to everything has to be cultural and human. Um, then there's some drama and then we move back to, okay, the we have to give it back to the contracts. Um, whenever we're dealing with binary stuff, in my experience, uh, somewhere in the middle is where you wanna be actually. So 
uh, we have uh, we don't want to abandon the fact that we are creating uh, direct relationships with our contributors and we're allocating grants and we want to onboard them into our system. And so there's uh, reward mechanisms that are more traditional, I suppose, in our space where grants are allocated to people to do work. We want you to do work. We want to formalize that. We want to ensure that you're getting value for your time so we can allocate grants. There's also um, uh, edge uh, contributors or organic contributors that are outside of that system that should be requir acquiring some value when they provide value back to the ecosystem. And then tools like SourceBread can uh, compensate or fill in those blanks. There's also overlap too. And that's something we can think about where people are receiving grants to do things, but they also get rewarded by an algorithm for uh, doing that work as well. Is that bad or is that nice? That's something we need to figure out too. We also have, uh, we're not relying on the algorithms to do quality control for us or determine what is allowed and what is not allowed. So we have a very robust and active uh, moderation and engagement team that will be in the forum uh, on the ground, helping guide people towards meritorious content as well. So uh, finding uh, the middle ground between all of these, these different tools and uh, either uh, allowing for tolerating or reducing overlap uh, on how these tools work is something that this group needs to figure out as well. All right. Uh, Woodrow, you had a question about weights. Uh, did you want to get on the mic and ask that question or should I read it out for you? Uh, uh, yeah, I can do it. Um, how much weight would we be putting on net node weights versus edge weights? So when it comes to content creation, are we leading more towards content creation or more participation from viewers? Um, which one are we vying for? Well, that's a good question. I think that in my mind, that's what that's going to be a process of maybe weeks or months of, of fine tuning and debate. Um, and I think that I would love to get everybody's opinions about what these things mean. Uh, one of the challenges I see with sort with a discourse, actually, or our, I should say forum, because I get discord and discourse mixed up even to this day. but. One of the problems with the forum is that um, it has tons of mechanisms to uh, produce content and inter and to uh, yeah, well produce content. It has, as far as I'm aware, one mechanism to produce or, or to reflect uh, the support of that content, which is the like button, and that's uh, it's a fairly blunt weapon um, or tool, I suppose is a nice way of putting it. Uh, there's something that's been hearted or it has not been hearted, and so th as a group, I would love to hear what people's opinions are. So, is content generation uh, more important or less important than support and reputational uh, type uh, signaling. Uh, so I, I, pre I presented another binary. So here's that was a trick one. Somewhere in the middle, I think, is the answer. But where in the middle and how is that waiting going to get played with is I think that's going to be one of the, the most compelling debates that we see uh, over the next couple of weeks. Do you have any suggestions? Actually, right, let me turn it back to you, Woodrow. What do you think would be most important to, to uh, emphasize? You're still muted, I think. I would say uh, creator more, edge more towards the creator and a little bit towards the participants. So like, I would say 100% creator, but 90%, like just a little bit trailing behind. That's Those are some huge <laughs> numbers, but something that trails behind the creator and almost saying like, thank you for your, contribution and participating with like leaving comments or leaving comments and talking is more important than just leaving a like because like you can scroll through anything just like something and get easy credits for it but when you sit down and you actually have a long lengthy conversation then i think that would be the most important part yeah it's an interesting one it at some point there needs to be or there doesn't need to be but it'd be helpful to have as an organization where we clarify exactly what outputs we're hoping for and the things that support those outputs and those things that the outputs directly and so how much value does making a post and finding oh my god there's 50 likes here i feel so empowered i think i'm going to go back and do some more comments so how how likely is that to happen and what value does that provide versus as you pointed out like it's more time and energy and work to actually sit there and grind out uh, in deep insights for an hour and a half on a comment. That's one is easy, but potentially has some value. The other one is hard and we hope has significant value. So 
we're, we're kind of playing this valuation model, which is we're trying to take things that traditionally would be not paid for at all and or done just for the spirit of doing it, right? Like people on Reddit don't get paid to do Reddit posts. Well, actually, so let's not talk about Reddit at all. So this, this is like kind of the tooling that's helping to make it, uh, create an anti-Reddit, I suppose, as far as quality control goes. But um, you know, when you apply incentives to things that are traditionally not incentivized, uh, you have to ask a lot of deep questions and some hard questions about um, what is the nature of engagement here? How organic is it? Yeah. How unbiased, well, anyways, I'm not going to throw out a bunch of questions, but it does get fairly murky. So thanks for that, Woodrow. Um, Chris, you're next on the list. Yeah, thank you for this fantastic um, experiment, Brian. Um, I'm looking at the results and I'm seeing a few things that are positive in that, like Vishesh, for example, hasn't posted for a long time, but he's still high up. And I think one of the issues is like, if you make something like a post about Uniswap or something that continues to be relevant over time, that seems to come through. And then you have people like Ralph and James who don't make topics, but are still able to get to the high levels, even though they're not creating topics, but they're engaging on topics. Um, so then I think like, and then you look at Lucas, he's paid specifically to output regular content at a, a quality level that was established so the actual results are promising in that if people have been paid by scurf to post content they should be coming at the top of the forum so that's great and then further the types of content that are coming up are varied so the type of content that Lucas posts is completely different than the type of content that Ralph posts than the type of content that I post, but they're all equally valid for their reasons. So I think that is something that is very promising in the results. Um, but then it's like, if, if there was like compensation, say Vishesh made a, a, a post that worked out over a year, how would he know that his post is like compensating him? So I think there's something in this where it's like, if someone, because this is where the royalty payments were really intriguing to me. It's like, if I make a post and then like five years later, it's still relevant. It's not out of the realm of possibility that I should still be compensated for that. So it's like looking at somebody who hasn't posted for a very long time, still making it to the top of the list. That to me is like, there's an opportunity there to actually make it. So like, if you make one really, really good post, you could potentially earn royalties for from that for like years to come and i think that's something that could definitely appeal to academics and industry but in that the way that it's reflected in the charts that's like very promising to me yeah it's interesting there are there is some signaling here that a the system is kind of working but we also need to think about some of the other things that you touched on too so um uh lucas comes in and does the research calls on a weekly basis and uh, that's going to rank him highly. And so do we need to think about mechanisms where potentially people can opt out or um, do they stay opted in? Everybody is playing in the same uh, sandbox. It's an interesting question. Seth, did you have something that you wanted to speak to directly to a point that Chris made? Because I might let you jump the, the, the line if that's the case. Uh, yeah, uh, so I just posted a recent, uh, uh, forum post from the MakerDAO forum uh, that kind of uh, speaks to one of your points, Chris. Uh, and that's basically like highlighting what, where, like where you got your cred from. Um, one thing that we've done in Maker, which the community has liked, is just run queries of what posts got the most cred in a given week or like all time. Uh, and like, that's a nice way to give like some like recognition and visibility. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, yeah. And also like the idea, and, and also like, if you create sort of like an evergreen post, uh, especially if people keep linking to it, uh, like you will just get sort of like an ongoing royalty, which, which is a cool feature in my opinion. Yeah, so there are mechanisms that allow people, so you can do a look back and there's sort of like this exponential or not, or like a sort of decay over time basis on relevance. Is that the case? I think that's on the Maker. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, basically, basically, yeah. Um, although, like, uh, like I, I maybe this is a good point to just throw in the distinction between cred and the payments. Uh, uh, like, those are two separate functions. Um, for instance, you could have like an exponential decay on the uh, on the payout formula, such that like even the old posts get paid a little bit. Um, or you can just decide to pay only according to cred created last week, and sort of like everything in between. And uh, like often, what people are really concerned about when they're talking about this is like the the payouts, not the cred itself necessarily. Um, so yeah, just those are two separate things that you can play with independently. All right, thanks for that, Seth. Um, Aloysius, is that how you pronounce that? You're up. Hello. Yes, it's Aloysius. Um, I guess what I was kind of just thinking was in the beginning when you were talking about um, posts on the forum um, and people earning for that, kind of, kind of, I heard like there's there's a like. And I think that's not really a whole lot of a metric for somebody putting a whole lot of thought and attention into something. And then so like if they post the thing and it's great and like not a lot of people respond or people look at it and they're like, whoa, I feel like this happens in our forum a lot. People go mind blown and they don't even have the time to like hit the like thing. They're sitting there like processing everything they just read. They got to go for a walk or write. Um, I have seen other communities uh, have their discourse um, posts fed to a channel in their server and people react to it in the channel there as well or they have like a metric for the author to receive something specific for writing the thing because they don't think that the little like is enough or they don't think oh, that people are paying attention so so is that because this part allows you so you can have like 15 different types of likes like brain and Insightful and all the rest of it, so you can have different weighting through Discord that you don't get in the forum. Is that the idea? Yeah, if you had certain categories that you were like yeah. wanting to capture or like have people write in certain like genres or something, those could be literally like channels that were weighted where the thing gets dropped or something like that when it's done. Also, just kind of like filing it um, and logging it. Those are just possibilities for the workarounds for those things. Yeah, that's very cool. I. I I'm trying to imagine the challenges that the source cred team has had, and I, I'm I imagine that you, the the team probably gets all of these crazy nuanced edge case requirements. Like, can you give us fifty seven different types of likes, and can you make it so content that has this many words in there or that many words is differently weighted? Like, the complexity of this thing, the scope, the potential for scope creep is is tremendous. It's actually kind of terrifying when you think about it for a bit. Uh, Ringo, you're up next. Uh, yeah, I actually forgot, but I do have a follow-up question, I suppose. Uh, it's all right. Uh, so I'm wondering how the the uh, the type of post is weighted. So, for example, I could write a 10-page reply to a comment or a 10-page post that post that says absolutely nothing, or I could write a one-line response that absolutely inspires the next great production. So I'm wondering if that's weighted at all in SourceCred. Well, I, yeah, I'm tempted to like guess a bit, and I know there's source cred people here, and so I'm reasonably sure that uh, liking or referencing existing posts allows you to acquire some different weighting. Um, but I think that the volume of this, and so I think that the potentially, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Seth already said nope, so maybe I'm already wrong. But um, if something, uh, if a post got likes and been, <clears throat> has been referenced, uh, and has numerous replies to it, I think, a waiting sign. But Seth, correct me if I'm wrong. So it's it's more about engagement uh, following the post. So it doesn't matter if I write a 10-page uh, empty post uh, because no one's going to respond to that anyway. I'm not sure. Actually, I am going to hand that off to Seth because the, I think that this is where uh, it, I think that the conversation for our community is going to be a lot of debate slash arguing about which slider needs to be dragged where over the course of the next few weeks and months um, as people begin to see how things shake out on a week-to-week -week basis and they, they think that they look back and go well my post was amazing how come i didn't get bumped up the list and, but uh, seth is is that something we need to think about um yeah like what was the last question i didn't quite catch that uh from the previous speaker at the at the very end there 
uh, how I, I guess how is in, in it, the, the difference between engagement and with a post and time spent making a post? Because I can spend a lot of time making a post that gets zero engagement, and I can spend zero time making a post that gets a lot of engagement. And sort of how does that factor mm -hmm. into the weighting of the score? So uh, source cred like does not measure like even the like of the post or anything like that. It's possible that you could program a heuristic like that uh, like into the plugin, but we haven't done that. I I will say one thing that we've noticed, for instance, in Maker, is the hat. Actually, you you kind of have almost like a, a related but inverse problem where people will post like this giant you know, like thing that nobody reads, but gets a lot of likes because people are just like, yay, good for effort. Um, you know? Um, yeah, I've done that so. countless times in Maker and admittedly in Scurf sometimes where I, wow, this is mm -hmm. amazing. I can't believe this. I just don't have time to read this right now. So I'm going to like it and I'll come back later. I promise. And then I <laughs> So I, I wonder if that's something that needs to be considered during the weightings. It's like, yeah, that's going to happen. People are going to be like, yeah, good for effort. Here's a like. So does that still make it a good post worthy of high scores and stuff like that? Yeah, and this is where well, as a, I'm going to do a brief side note. So this is why we don't want to um, rely completely on the source cred being um, the compensation mechanism. We want to people, if people are writing posts or long comments on our forum, and they're within the community, either in the firewall or join us in the chat, they all are aware that that time is billable. So if you, it doesn't matter who you are, if you spend hours writing up a comment on our forum, uh, we should know about it, and then we can uh, make sure that you're compensated. But, um, so those are the two mechanisms, but um, yeah, it's, it, it's sort of a blunt instrument, I think is one of the things that we're gonna have to, this is why it relies on uh, people and moderators in communities and engagement. So we need to find people that are making these awesome posts and hire them as quickly as we possibly can or encourage them to join other projects and stuff. And so there's a longer tail, but it's it's going to be super tough. Um, uh, Mahalik, you're up next. Yeah, I, I really applaud this um, this session, and um, I think I think it's really important, true that we that we have it set up so that it's not gameable. If somebody were to make a post about two unnamed comedians who got into an, I was going to say entanglement argument, uh, and posted it on the forum without uh, moderation that could get an incredible number of likes and, and compensation. Um, I had a question about, uh, I think Reddit came up earlier, and it's something that I've been looking at for the forum in terms of design for engagement, uh, upvotes, uh, to be able to say, like, I think this is interesting. I think other people see it, think it's interesting. Let's push it to the top. Um, and I'm curious about uh, what what the rest of the community thinks about that, as opposed to um, a like or you know the different kinds of likes that exist, for example, in Facebook or LinkedIn. But something that says like, "This is good. Everybody should see it." Uh, upvotes. Just curious about the reaction to those. Well, I'm. I want everybody else to speak, but I can't control myself in this one instance, so forgive me. Um, this is something we've been thinking about with the forum as well, is that it's not designed to um, surface or move to the top content. It's that's been, that the community has determined has value. It's, so we, whenever you go to the forum, you see whatever is most recent, basically. Um, that's a kind of a problem, kind of not a problem, and it's something that we're thinking about too, um, as far as the UX around uh, discourse goes. We don't necessarily want to editorialize and or pin things uh, beyond reason, but uh, the best content should be surfaced um, and with some kind of uh, opportunity for new content to be uh, on the, above the fold as well. It's a tough challenge. Um, when it comes to, I think we're back to the stuff that Aloysius was talking about, that um, finding more granular or nuanced uh, ways of uh, signaling support uh, potentially that, that one of the solutions is just we'll just point people in or have a notification channel in the, in the chat and then people can pick one of five different reaction types and then uh, try to do weighting based on that thing. Uh, or we uh, start hiring developers to start augmenting our discourse and then making sure that source code is capable of picking up on that nuance as well. Yeah. 
Okay, next person on the list is Paul. You had something you wanted to add? Uh, yeah, so I mean, because we have been talking about kind of like this human touch component that I also mentioned earlier, um, my question was actually literally just asked in the comments as well. So how would cred change if some type of moderation action happened, right? So like a post gets flagged, it gets deleted, something like that. Um, what would happen there? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. <laughs> Brian, Seth, do you guys know what happens? So if somebody gets a ton of likes and then we wake up, next morning go oh no 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 and then we just delete that post do they still get their creds or their their rewards uh no the the way it works is every time source cred is run it pulls all the data fresh oh, and so if a post post. is and recreates the graph so if a post is deleted it's just not there uh the likes are gone too also i i made a comment in uh, the chat but an, like another thing to keep in mind is that um, <laughs> the higher your cred score, the more, uh, as a user, the more uh, cred you will flow via your likes. Uh, so that adds sort of like a natural human moderation element. Presumably people with high cred scores like should be sort of like directing cred flows a little bit more. Uh, also, and this is a feature that we built for Maker actually, uh, if you're familiar with Discord trust levels, uh, you can uh, you can set the amount of, of cred minted uh, with a like by trust level. And so someone brand new to the forum will have a trust level zero, and you can set that to zero. Uh, like their likes don't mint cred. Uh, trust level one is a little more. Trust level three, like a lot more. And I, I think that is actually it makes it like uh, much more robust to gaming and also sort of like uh, indirectly incentivizes probably like the the OGs a little bit more too. Interesting, thanks for that. Um, I wanna to touch on gaming for a second too, but Brian, you've been waiting uh, for a bit. So did you wanna make a comment? Yeah, I'd love to have a very uh, robust conversation because, uh, like I said, this is not a top-down decision. Like uh, inside the firewall or inside the community, we uh, have all given a lot of thought and a lot of discussion about how do we compensate people for the work directly or more traditionally, I suppose, as far as it goes in our space. Like grants are allocated, work is tracked, hours are submitted, invoices are are paid, and disbursements go out the door. This is all fairly um, well established. We want to. Um, we want this to be a community, the source credit implementation and these other things like coordinate and the other tooling that we're looking at, we want this to be community managed. Um, so it is critically important that uh, the people that are doing the work on the ground in the forum are engaged with the conversation about where the weights land and what we're trying to incentivize and what are the risks here and uh, governing this system. Because I also would love to, for the community to figure out what disincentivization looks like, what we want to encourage and maximize for, and also how much uh, funds do we allocate on a monthly basis. So I'd love for everybody to get together and decide that for themselves. So what is the bucket that is being drawn from? And then we can get uh, the community handling some basic treasury management around source credit as well. Um, so please join the forum thread, uh, hit up uh, Brian directly if you have something you want to do, and then talk in the chat as well. Um, about this. I want to touch on gamification because we're running up against time. Um, I've uh, been down this road of um, uh, trying to route around and or anticipate end user uh, uh, abuse, um, or not abuse, that's what's right, uh, uh, gamification of any system, I suppose. So everything from uh, e-commerce to light banking to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, up and down this thing. Um, and in my experience, one of my primary takeaways is that attempting to uh, anticipate how a system would get gamed uh, before that gaming happens is uh, a long and laborious process and, and guaranteed almost to fail because you can't anticipate how people will find flaws in the system. Uh, in my experience, the um, 
fears of how things could be uh, misused uh, generally always exceed the actual misuse of a system. So it's better to, uh, in my experience, it's better, I'll just give you the TLDR because we're going to run up against time. It's better to uh, expect the best behavior, create a culture where good behavior is rewarded, and then keep uh, your eyes open for uh, misbehavior. And if it does occur, um, have a conversation about it and then see what the community thinks about ways to mitigate that kind of thing. So uh, obviously we do not want to end up uh, creating an incentive mechanism and then find out in a month or two that we've just turned into steam it and it's a race to the bottom for minimum viable effort for maximum possible rewards. Uh, depending on how uh, your thinking runs, that's the only logical solution when you find an incentivization mechanism. Uh, but I've found uh, that humans just don't behave that way in the real world, which is you know, comforting and delightful. So uh, we will, part of this community governance aspect is on a weekly basis, take a look at what kind of maximize it or incentives we've applied, what kind of outputs we're trying to promote, how well that actually worked, if there's any uh, negative behaviors that are arising, and then we can react to them as they show up. But I don't want to, or I want to caution the community from uh, trying to uh, model out uh, how bad people could possibly be and then try to design its systems in anticipation of that. Um, it's, a, it's a hard way to live and I don't think that there's a lot of ROI in it. So there's, there's, that's my sort of gaming philosophy and I'm willing to be proven wrong, but that rarely happens, so <laughs> there we go. Um, Paul, did you want to uh, give us a recap on next steps or how to get involved or how to keep this thread going, the engagement thing? Uh, well, I did just put the forum link, right? So I'm sure people have additional questions. Uh, people are going to be thinking about this stuff. Like I know I'm going to be, and so as stuff is stewing in your head, it would be great to uh, put those thoughts into the forum so it kind of becomes a source of truth of how does SCURF make decisions about this type of community stuff, uh, my very technical term, stuff. I believe the next steps are going to be, um, you know, Brian is, uh, going to continue kind of working on some of this waiting stuff. He has this kind of open um, open call for people who are interested in talking about weights. Uh, we can probably set up a variety of breakout calls. And then I think the step after that is we start presenting those types of data sets to the community and see if we can't play around a little bit with um, how much would we want to budget to do that type of stuff? I think that those are the the next steps and look forward to calls for those types of actions in both chat and then probably also in that forum thread and maybe showing up or actually will be showing up in other community calls. Right on. Uh, there's an opportunity for some inception level incentivizations here. So uh, join the forum thread and talk about how source credit can contribute to uh, the things you want to maximize for and you're probably going to be earning uh, creds while you do it. So when we turn it off, it'll be retroactive. So looking very much forward to uh, seeing what the community aligns on. So. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, thanks to SourceCred for showing up. I really appreciate uh, you being in the room for this. I'm looking forward to how we uh, implement this stuff. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you so much. much.